Almost Twins by Mark Fielding Darden Chapter 7 The Shark Let's Go 1964 Georgie pulled himself to shore and immediately turned to look for his brother. Just beyond the breakers, all he could see was thrashing and blood. A large, dark, menacing form continued to have its way with his twin brother until suddenly the water was horribly still. For about twenty seconds, Georgie could see nothing. An eerie purple sheen glazed across the water. Seconds ticked by, as if some magical universe had just replaced reality. Georgie's mind was working overtime, and a loud ringing filled his head. Then, out of the shiny afternoon waves, his brother shot into the air, almost as if something had thrown him from the water. Jeff was alive and swimming for his life. He somehow caught the next wave and was thrown on the beach. Georgie was ecstatic, but blood was everywhere. For years to come, Georgie would tell how Jeff said he went down with a shark, banging his back on the sand below, nearly blacking out. Then grabbing the shark's head with both hands, Jeff shoved a thumb into one of the creature's eyes and punched the shark's sandpaper nose with his other hand. This maneuver caused the shark to instinctively release Jeff, and he was able to pull free and make his way to the surface. In the process of grabbing the shark, both of Jeff's hands were bitten through and through, though the flesh was not shredded and his hands remained intact. However, Georgie's wound was an outright bite and removal of flesh. Truth be told, the blood on the beach that day was pretty much all Georgie's. By then the boy's parents had heard the screams and had come running down the steep hillside to help. Other than some serious puncture wounds on his hands from the shark teeth, Jeff was miraculously unharmed, as if rescued from the graveyard of the sea itself. Loretta was well trained in trauma cases such as this and pulled her skirt free to wrap Georgie's leg to stop as much bleeding as possible. Quick, she commanded the stunned observers. Get a buggy and let's get him to the clinic. They loaded Georgie into the cart and off they went. Within ten minutes she had the boy on a table with a needle and thread doing her magic. Nevertheless, Georgie's leg was permanently damaged. A large part of his foot was gone and he would limp the rest of his life. Sometimes he would wish he were not even alive. Todd flew him to Gorgas Hospital in the Canal Zone, where he spent a month recuperating before returning home. Jeff was right there with him the whole time. The puncture wounds on Jeff's hands had healed, but would remain visible to Georgie for life. Georgie would live out the rest of his days as both a self-aware retard and a maimed limper. Not only would he always know that he was less than his perfect brother, but he would now have to drag his leg through the rest of his life as an anchor, reminding him of the chains that fate had wrapped around his neck at birth and the sacrifice his brother, Jeff, had made to save his life that day from the shark. Still, Georgie would not turn bitter. Georgie was a thankful brother, and for the rest of his life, he would prove that to Jeff, one way or another. Chapter 8, up next. <laughs>